and welcome to your session four. Uh, maybe at the end of the session, we can talk about your exam date and how we're going to proceed going forward. Because if you're writing on the 10th of September or earlier in that week of September, we need to get you prepared to write the exam. And we haven't covered as much because of the bi-weekly session but we can check with jack if can't we have a workshop on a saturday which will be a longer session where we do exam prep um but yeah i will have to check um, to check that but anyway so let's start with today's session which we're going to look at chi-square test for using the contingency table. Uh, the last session for August will be on the 31st, and we will be looking at basic probabilities. I think I can combine that session and do basic probability and normal probabilities at the same time. We'll see how far we, can, we get on that day. <clears throat> um, yeah, so do you have any question or comment or query before I start with today's session? Okay, in the absence of such a comment or a question, then we can we can start with the session. So we're going to look at chi-square test for contingency table. Like with the previous sessions that we had, we were looking at hypothesis testing. So with chi-square test as well, uh, we will be doing testing of two nominal variables to check if or to test whether the two variables are related. So a chi-square test is a test used to investigate whether the distribution of two categorical, usually nominal, or they can also be ordinal variables are related or do they differ from one another? Uh, <clears throat> so with chi-square, because we're working or looking at two categorical variables, it means we can create a summary table that has the rows and the columns. And that will create a table called a contingency table. And what we should learn or know about the chi-square test, uh, when we make a decision, it's usually a, a positively skewed distribution. Uh, because it's got the upper uh, a distribution in your upper tail area. So with chi-square, your region of rejection will be in the upper area of the tail or in the positive side, and we call this a negative lead skewed distribution. Even though it is a one-sided or one-directional um table or distribution that when we make a decision we're going to use the right side a chi-square test is always a that a, a non-directional or a two-tail test it's a non-directional test <clears throat> so like with hypothesis testing we need to always know how to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Stating the null hypothesis, we're always going to check whether the two variables or test whether the two variables are related, uh, independent, meaning the two variables are not related, 
or they have no relationship. Your alternative is going to test whether the two variables are dependent, meaning they have a relationship or they are related. So in terms of a contingency table, you will have your variable one on the row, which will have the two categories and a variable two at the column, which will have the two categories that relates to it. It can also be a three by two. So this one, we call it a two by two contingency table because it's got two rows and two columns. So we can also get a two by three, which means it's got two rows and three columns. Or we can have a table which has a three by three, meaning there will be three categories within that variable and three categories within that variable at the row, at the column. So in terms of a contingency table, if they didn't calculate the total, you can add the uh, the values of the column variable and create the grand total or well, a total or you can add the values on your rows and create the total and you can add your total to create the grand total because when we do the calculation for a chi-square test we need to calculate what we call the expected value because what they will give you will be the observed values then you need to calculate your expected value because the formula to calculate chi-squared test is the sum, if I write it in a, in a sign format, it will be the sum of your observed value minus your expected value squared divided by your expected value. And that will be your chi-squared statistic that you will use to calculate your test statistics that you will use to make a decision. And in order for you to calculate the expected value, you need to have the grand total because the expected value of a contingency table uses the rows and the, the row total and the column total. And I'm going to show you later on. When we make a decision, Making a decision, we can use either the critical value or the p-value. So if we use the critical value to make a decision, then when the calculated test statistic, which is the test statistic that we will calculate, if it's greater than the critical value, which will be the value you find on the table. So there is a critical value table that you can use to get the value of your critical value and if it's your test statistic is bigger than your critical value you reject the null hypothesis and in order to find the critical value we use alpha and the degrees of freedom and our degrees of freedom are your number of rows not the row total but the number of rows you just need to count how many they are on a two by two contingency table your number of rows will be two at minus one times the number of columns minus one and that would be two minus one and once you have the alpha and the degrees of freedom you go to the critical value table you will find your critical value and you will look at your test statistic that you calculated and compare it to the critical value and then make a decision if it's with the p-value Statistically, they will ca calculate it using a statistical tool and it will generate the p-value. And you can say if the p-value is less than your alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. And those are the decision rules that you can use in the critical value or using the p-value. So you have two options that you can use. Okay, so with chi-square test, you will be given a frequency table which will have your contingency table with your, your 
uh, two categorical variables which will have your observed values within it. If there are no totals, you calculate the totals. Then you need to calculate the expected frequency and the expected frequency is, so in order for you to calculate the expected frequency, we use the formula, your row total multiplied by column total divided by the grand total, which will be your n. And that will calculate the expected frequency and you will do it for every num uh, row and column. So the ij will represent the uh, the column number and the column and the row number. In order to make a decision, we need to find the degrees of freedom and we know that the degrees of freedom is R minus one, which is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. Then you need to calculate the test statistic, which we know that our chi-square stat, which will be the test statistic or the calculated test statistic will be given by the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divide by your expected so you will take for every individual value of your observed value you're going to subtract the corresponding expected and you square the answer and then divide by the expected and that will give you the test statistic and once you have the test statistic then you are ready to make a decision if your test statistic exceeds the critical value then we reject the null hypothesis. Or we can use the p-value. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at an example. Usually on your questionnaire, when you do a survey, you find that you ask question, you ask people to complete the questionnaire with answers that has the yes and no type of answers or responses. So let's look at this. So if we have a question in the questionnaire which asks people, do you like a television program? And they can either select like or dislike. And probably in your demographics information, you would have asked them what is their gender and they can select whether they are male or female. We can take these two questions and create a hypothesis testing. And we can say test for the relationship that exists between gender and the response to the question, do you like a television program? So the first step that we need to do is to, to get the observed frequency, which will be your actual data that you will receive um, from the responses. So how many number of people who answered the questionnaire, do you like television program? 50 of them like the television program. 55 of them dislike the television program. 36 of those who like the television program selected that they are also male. And 14 who like the television program were female. People who answered the questionnaire, 66 of them are male, regardless of whether they like the television or not. They are males and females, they were 39. And all the responses that you got at, they were 105. So stating the null hypothesis, we can state that there is a relationship between gender and the choice or this choice of television program. The alternative will say there is a relationship. So in your null hypothesis, they will all, it will always state that there is no relationship and we want to disprove that. In your alternative, you're going to state that there is a relationship. It's the opposite of the other one. Now we need to find the expected frequencies. 
So since we have our totals, remember our expected frequency, we need to use the row totals and the column totals and the grand total. Remember that it was our expected frequency is the row total multi total multiply by the column total divide by the grand total which is your n and that is what we're going to do in order for us to calculate for 36 which i will say it's on row one and column one or i can say it's for like and male I will use the row total, which the row is 50. So that will be 50 and the column times 66 divide by the grand total, which is 105. And that will give me. Well, I, I brought my calculator here with me, but it's fine. Since I'm not sharing my entire screen, I can quickly calculate it. So we say it is 50 multiply by 66 equals divide by 105. And the expected value will be 31.42. And that's how you will calculate your expected frequency. That will be 31.4. which we can round it off to two decimal, which will be 31.43. And that will give you the expected value for 36. Calculating the expected value for 14, we still do row total times column totals divided by the expected value. So for 14, you will say it's 40, not 40, 50. I'm sorry, let me remove the paint. We'll say 50 times 39 divide by 105. For dislike, you will do the same. It will be 55 times 66 divide by 105. For 25, you will say it is 55 times 39 divide by 105. And that's how you will find the expected value for the observed information. And once you have completed your expected value calculations, then we're ready to calculate the test statistic. We can also go find the degrees of freedom. Remember the degrees of freedom is number of rows. There are one, two rows and number of columns. There are one, two columns. So it will be two minus one times two minus one which will be 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. So our degrees of freedom is 1. In order for us to calculate the test statistic, so remember we had our observed value, and all the observed value had the corresponding expected values. We need to calculate the chi-square step which states the sum of your ob the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divide by the expected so i can create a table like this where i write my observed and its corresponding expected frequency because our 36, if we go back, remember 30, 31.43 corresponds to the actual of 36. And 18 corresponds to 14, 
and 30 corresponds with 34 and so forth. So now I can just write it like this where I have my 36 and 31.3. And because the equation says observed minus expected, I can calculate that. So 36 minus 31 gives me 4.57. 14 minus 18 gives me minus 4.58. 30 minus 34 gives me minus 58. 4.58. 25 minus 20 gives me 4.57. So I'll, I'm done with what is inside the bracket. I need to do what is uh, the square. I need to square all these answers. So 4.57 times 4.57 give me 0 0.67. Um, and you continue negative 4.58 times negative 4.58 gives you 1.13. Negative 4.53 times negative 4.58 gives you 0 0.61. 4.57 times 4.57 will give you 1.03. So the square is the same as multiplying that number again by itself. So we're done with the top. Oh, sorry. We're not done with the top because all of them you needed to do. Sorry, my mistake here. Uh, this is a 4.57 times 4.57 divide by 4.57. That is the answer that we're looking for, which is, that will give you 0 0.67. And you can do the same. Uh, minus 4.58 times minus 4.58 divide by minus 4.58 will give you 1.13 and that will be that is everything without the summation so the summation means adding so we need to add that value plus that value plus that value that is that summation and sorry and when you add all of the values then you get the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divide by your expected will give you 3.44 because if you add 0 0.67 plus 1.13 plus 0 0.61 plus 1.03 it should give you 3.44 and that is your chi-square test statistic going to the table the chi-square test statistic Remember, we did find our degrees of freedom to be equals to 1. So if they gave us our alpha of 0 0.05 or at alpha of 5% level of significance, then we can go on the degrees of freedom, find your 1, and on your at the top, find your level of significance or your alpha value, and where they meet, that will be your critical value. And the critical value here is 3.841. So we need to use the chi-square test statistic that we got, which was 3.447. If I draw a chi-square distribution, and I say at this point, my region of rejection based on my critical value of 3,841. If that is my region of rejection, taking my critical or uh, my test statistic, chi squared test statistic, which is 3.4, I can locate where it is. Remember, anything that falls on the shaded area, we reject the null hypothesis. Anything that falls in the white area, we do not reject the null hypothesis. 3.44 falls in the white area, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. So since the chi-square test is less than your critical value, then we do not reject the null hypothesis.
So if they would have given us the p-value, we will use the p-value and alpha level of significance or alpha level of significance to make a decision. And then in conclusion, we can, con because we are not rejecting the null hypothesis, we can say there is no significant relationship between the product of choice of television and gender. And that's how you do chi-square test. Any question? Before we start looking at typical questions that you get in your exam, any question am i alone Please remember to complete the register. Okay, so without any questions, we can then continue with today. Uh, Andrea, uh, So you haven't been seeing anything from what I have presented or not? Okay, there are no questions. I'm not sure. Let me just check because I see as if there are some messages in the chat. I just want to double check that, that I'm not missing. Okay. Guys, in order for you, for us to do the exercise, are you going to be typing? So you're not going to be talking to me the whole time. So let me also put on then my phone so that I can read your chats while I am busy on a presentation mode. Um, All right, so the first question. A researcher wants to establish whether the type of employment category that is filled by employees of a particular company is significant is significantly related to their gender. The employees can be categorized as manager, human resource, administrative, maintenance, and information technology worker. And their genders are male and female. Which of the following, uh, which will be the most appropriate test to use? Is it number one, to test for independent, which is the t-test for two independent samples. Number two is the Pearson correlation test statistic. Number three is it a chi-square test statistic. 
which option? I'd say number three because it's categories. Yes, because you've got two categories, which one is a category about the role, the type of employees, and another category is your gender. So that will be option number three. Which of the following is appropriate formula for chi-square test? Is it number one, number two, or number three? Remember, you can also post your answer on the chat if you don't want to, to talk to me. In that way, I, will, I can also see if what I have shared with you, you do understand. It makes number my one. life easier. Okay. Yes, that is number one. That's correct. Because number two is to test for the difference between the sample means, and that is for one sample, for one sample or one population. And number three is the test of is your correlation R, is your correlation coefficient formula. Exercise three, a contingency table represents, is it one, the distribution of the frequencies for a variable, two, a frequency counts for each of a number of possible outcome of an experiment, three, the frequency counts if each observed or if each outcome measured on two nominal scale variable when they are cross classified. One, two or three. Number one. Number one says a contingency table is a distribution of frequency for a variable. So if it's one variable, when I only have gender, because gender is one of a variable, doesn't say frequencies, it, oh, sorry, doesn't say variables, which means there should be at least two. So number one is not correct. Now you are three. left with two or three. Frequency number count three. of each number. Okay. Number three. I hear number three, and that is correct because it says it's a frequency count of two nominal variables when they are cross-classified. That is a contingency table. Number two, it says it's a frequency count of each number of possible outcome. And that will just give you a discrete table which will only have one variable. Exercise four, which of the following sets are appropriate for determining whether a relationship exists exists between two variables if both are measured on a nominal scale of measurement. Is it one, a t-test for two independent samples? Two, is it a testing, is testing the significance of the Pearson correlation coefficient? Or three, the chi-square test? Number two. I'll go for three. I'm thinking the word relationship. <laughs> number one. Uh, I hear number one, number two, number three. Okay, so let's start with number one. So number one says the T test for independent. Number one will be testing for the difference between two independent sample or two groups, which 
here and number two we will be using numerical numerical information which will test the scores of the pretest and the um the scores of either the male or females or we can test the scores or the test of your assignment and the test of your aptitude test or something like that that will be used to test the t test number two where it says testing the significance of pearson correlation you also need two numerical variables which one will be your independent variable and another one will will be your dependent variable remember that that is the previous ones the previous sessions that we had if we read the statement before we even come to the chi square test chi square or oh, chi square test tests the relationship if it exists also number two tests the relationship so the difference between number one uh, sorry number two and number three is number two test the relationship of numerical variable number three test the relationship of categorical variable and number one test if there is a difference between the variables. so this one tests the relation the relationship so reading the question you need to identify whether does it test the relationship between two variables and if it's the test between two variables are those two variables numerical or categorical and they it gives you nominal scale and what it will be a nominal scale it's part of your categorical variable categorical what are they for numerical scale numerical scale i'm sorry about my handwriting i i i hope by now you are used to it so for numerical variable the scales are uh, ratio remember ratio and interval that is the scale for numerical scale for categorical it's either i'm so sorry i must go back to grade one to go learn how to write no nominal or ordinal okay so the answer here is option number three because we're dealing with nominal scale of measurement the chi square is used to compare which aspects of the data for the two samples number one the distribution of the data is classified in terms of a variable two the sample means of a variable for each sample three the variance of the variable as measured for each sample one two or three Remember, you can post your answer if you are not sure or if you don't want to say it out loud. So is it one, two or three? three. You're saying three. Three is incorrect. Because here it talks about the variance. If we want to test for the variance, we use the F, F test, F 
expect and that will test your variance one divided by your variance two and that is to when you're testing or you want to compare your variance so number three is incorrect now you are left with one or two is it one or is it two Um, I think it's one. One is the correct answer because number two, you can use your t-test to test this for the sample means. So either is it for group or is it for independent groups or dependent groups? So number one is the correct one. As long as it talks about chi-square test, always remember needs to be data that is in categorical format and there needs to be two of them. So this one says the data is classified. The only data that can be put into categories or can be classified is categorical data. Numerical data. We can classify it, but we don't say classified because numerical data are measured. So only number one is the correct answer. <clears throat> Exercise six. A number of psychiatric patients are classified by gender, male or female, and into one of four categories as schizophrenic, severely depressed, bipolar disorder, and others. Which of the following is suitable for representing counts or frequencies of person or persons which falls into possible subcategories? Can we use a contingency table, a scatter plot, a histogram, or a spreadsheet. One, two, three, or four. Isn't it a contingency table? Yes, it is a contingency table because a contingency table, we can use it to visualize two categorical variables which are classified as gender. So on the rows, we can put gender. On the column, we can put the other four categories of uh, mental health issues or psychiatric illnesses. Or <clears throat> A scatter plot visualizes numerical values, numerical values, and you need two of them, X and Y. A histogram is a visualization which also does the numerical, numerical values, which you take one, or you need to have at least one variable, one variable, one numerical variable, and you put it into boundaries or class with and create a histogram and that is your histogram a scatter plot remember it is this graph a contingency table it's your category one and category two a spreadsheet it's if you think of a spreadsheet, you can just think about Excel. I'm not even going to explain what that is. <clears throat> okay. So, so can you say a contingency table should always remember that it has rows and columns? Yes. So for example, like here, they don't talk about rows and columns. The key things you need to all, always remember is categories. Categories are classified classifications so you classify and you are given two variables so variable one okay. which is a categorical variable 
and variable two, which is those four categories, which are your, uh, maybe let's not call this contingency table of hours categories. Let's call it, let's say this is gender and, oh, sorry. I should have used gender on the side, my bad. So on the rows is your gender. So this will be gender on the rows, which will have male or female. And then at the top, you will have the four categories, um, which is schizophrenic, severely depressed, and you have bipolar and others so you see that is your frequent your frequency table which is your contingency table then they also mention things like counts remember here you can put here counts which is one or two or four and six and eight and 13 and 14 that those are counts Counts and frequency are one and the same thing. So frequencies is count, count is frequencies. And that is that. So in your mind, you should also have this visualization to say, oh, a scatter plot, you will have your X and your Y variable. When the values of X increases, the values of Y increases for a positive relationship. A histogram is if you have one variable, uh, let's say exam marks, and then they can say those who receive 30% to 50%, those who receive 50% to 60%, those who receive 60% to 70%, those who receive 70 between 70 and 80, and so forth. And how you differentiate between the visualizations. Okay. There's a hand there for you. Pardon? Oh, I said someone. Okay, okay um, exercise seven. Is there a question? Yes, I do have a question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I um, just want to know, does the congestion table, does it hold data? Data. Yes, it does. It does. Remember, th these are your questions. So how many people have selected in your questionnaire uh, in this? Let's say even it's not a questionnaire. This, let's say this is your, um, which you you doing IOP or oh, is this psych psychology psychology research? So let's say you work in a research center, a human resource research center somewhere, and yes. have a record of your 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 clients or your your patients that comes yes. for consultation. So yes. you will have on their file what their gender is, and then you will also have on their file what type of illnesses or issue that they came for consult on. So at the end of the month, you take your, your information and then you count. Of those who are females, how many of them have schizophrenia? And then you count them and then you get that there are only two of them. And then you do for males, how many of them have schizophrenia? You get that it's one. How many of them are severely depressed? You find that there are 10 females and three males. How many of them have bipolar? Maybe more males have bipolar and, and two females have bipolar and the other maybe 20 and, and 10 other illnesses that is the data that you have you just classify it and summarize it so at the end you will know how many patients you are helping in a month and you can have the grand total of them because this will be those who have schizophrenia regardless of whether they are male or female um, which will be your total 
and those who have severe depression, there will be 13, and those will be 17 with bipolar, and 30 for those who have other illnesses. And you can also find the total of male or female, regardless of what illnesses they have. So that will be 84, and this will be 29. And the grand total will be how many patients you have in the month? It will be three, three patients that you have in the month. So that is a contingent table. Um, okay, I just need clarification, uh, ma'am. Let's say, for example, you're at work. Mm -hmm. So, can you not, can you use the congested table instead of a spreadsheet? Yeah. Uh, yes, because a contingency table, you can create it using your spreadsheet as well. So, uh, let's, uh, now we're going into another, but it's fine because we have okay sorry another one hour no don't worry don't apologize for it uh you ask and i shall answer the question uh, i just want to go to a spreadsheet okay for some reason my presentation doesn't want to It's fine, it's okay, because I just needed uh, confirmation, that's all. No, it's fine, I will show you just now. I just need to. To end the slideshow. Because it doesn't also want to move. So let's say you have a. I'm not sure which way to do. Oh, I work at the hospital at the moment. Okay, so let's assume this are uh, and probably. Have another person, and as in this, the female, female, just want to speak to you. So, to type every time. Now, this patient is one, 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 one. I'm just gonna do one, one because this is the number of time they came in, regardless. So you have a, you have your file. Uh, this is your file, your records per day or whatever the day is. And this is illness. And this is the agenda. And this is the count because usually on an Excel spreadsheet, you can count them. So you just take this, your contingency table is a pivot table. So you just go to your insert and then you go insert a pivot table. And um, I will also want to make sure that this table is on the same sheet. I just go to existing and go inside the location and click on where I want this contingency table to be at. And it's going to create a pivot so I can take my illness. Or maybe I should have used the same. So there is my illness and there is your gender. So in at work, you will have many many other columns you will have the arrays you will have the doctor that the the doctor that is helping something like that so there will be uh, a lot information maybe i shouldn't have put the table there 
because then my my values here are squashed. So let's make it bigger. So on a contingency table, I just want to make this bigger. Not too big, big. Okay, so on a contingency table, either I can use the count because I put there one, 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 but I can use any any other value that I want and put it on the, the measure value. And there is your contingency table and it will have how many of them have A, how many have D, how many have C. So if I change one of these values, let's say, let's make this one A and reduce the values AA. I can just refresh this table and you will see sorry my laptop is very slow today. I can just refresh and now it looks much better. Let's remove G and make it F. Let's remove F and make FG. <laughs> so there is your contingency table. Oh, okay. So you Thank can you. also, and that is your contingency table. There are your PayPal, and they just summarize your information. Okay. Thank you so much. In, in, in. All right. Okay. 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 I have a question. Thank you very much for the demo. At least I'll, I'll be able to use my. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can also do the type with Yes. Uh, what is it? Another discussion for another. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they are part of the class today. Uh, please mute if you're not saying anything. Thank you. Number seven, a researcher studying possible sex-linked inheritance of three psychiatric disorder denoted by A, B, and C, tabulated by gender, which is male or female, of 100 psychiatric patients against their diagnosis. And that is your contingency table. What they didn't do here is calculate the total, but it's not a problem. So this is your contingency table, which has the three types of diagnose, 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 diagnosis, oh. and male or gender. The question is, which research design did the researcher use? Number one, did the researcher use a correlational design? Number two, did they use a two sample group design? Number three, did they use a three sample group design? Is it one, two, or three? Think about what we are discussing today actually as well. I think it's two. Two. Two sample group design. Nope. Oh, then it's one. Then it's one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need to ask yourself. These three you samples. You need to ask yourself this question. <laughs> Remember here they're talking about sample designs. So it means there is one group and then there is another group. Nah? 
if it's two sample. If it's three sample design, then there is one group, one group, one group. Sample one, sample two, sample three. Sample one and sample two. So it cannot be a sample because here we have only one sample of hundreds of hundred patients. We don't have two samples. We only have one. One sample. One sample with hundred psychiatric patients. We don't have n is equals to one of hundred. N is equals to one of hundred. N is equals to one of hundred or two or three. Sorry, this will be n two. Or oh, this one n is equals to hundred. N is equals to hundred. We don't have that. We only have one sample. One. So that won't be correct. So also, the correct answer is one. Yes. Also, when you see a contingency table, you also need to remember that this you're looking at. If not, you're doing the probabilities. Here, yeah, then it means you are doing a correlational study. Or a, remember what correlation is. Correlation is a study of relationships. We want to check whether that relationship is it a weak relationship or a strong relationship. Are they related or are they not related? That's correlation. Remember, you can do a correlational design for numerical value, which will use the Pearson correlation. For categorical data, we'll use the chi-square test. So, so if I understand this correctly, it doesn't mean that we can say that the we are trying to see if there's a relationship between the sex-linked inheritance and the psychiatric disorder. Nope. You want to see? Remember the sex-linked inheritance are your three psychiatric disorders. You want to see if there is a relationship between gender and those psychiatric disorders. That is this contingency table, the ABC and the male and female. That's the relationship you want to see. Oh, so that means we want to see if maybe males are more prone to these psychiatric disorders. Yes, which or is sex linked inheritance psychiatric okay. disorder. Okay, now I see. Thank you. All right. I like it when you see or oh, you understand okay so number one is the only correct answer exercise eight a researcher oh i think oh no they are different a researcher studying a possible sex linked inheritance of three psychiatric disorder tabulated the gender of 100 psychiatric against their diagnosis. And that is our contingency table. The question is, what are the requirements with regards to the statistical test to be performed? One, is it a directional statistical test required? Two, is it a non-directional statistical test required? Three, it's a non-statistical test required. Those who joined the session late, I'm going to uh, depend on those who joined the session earlier, who started with the session, because we did cover this. So which option is the correct answer? Before you answer that, because I can see that the majority of you didn't start with us when we start, let me not be unfair. Let's go to the first. 
let's go to the first first slide that we started with when we were explaining what category uh, chi-square is. So you can read, but the one that is most important is the last bullet. Ooh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. It's non-directional. You satisfy, satisfied with what you read? Okay, going back to the question. The question was asking, if we're looking for a test of a relationship between two categorical variables, what test statistic can we perform? Is it the directional test statistic? No test statistic or a non-directional test statistic? Number two, a non-directional test statistic. Okay, number two, even though when we make a decision, like I said, we're using a one-tail area, but a chi-square test is a non-directional test statistic. Representing the gender of members of parliament, I think in your module they like gender, yo. Representing the gender of members of parliament versus their political party to which they belong is best done in a form of a, mm, a scatter plot, a contingency table, or a two sample group design. Contingency table, number two. It will be number two, definitely. Because a scatter plot, I'm not going to go there because we covered this. Scatter plot is for numerical variable, independent versus your dependent. Two samples group, it means it would have been two different samples selected because now we're talking about two categorical variables political party affiliation and gender. A researcher wants to establish whether a relationship exists between people's religious affiliation and whether they are in favor or against death penalty, penalty, yes or no. Which of the following would be the most appropriate test to use? Will it be a T test or two independent samples? The chi-square test, the Pearson correlation test, the T test for independent. Remember, you need to be able to identify the things from the paragraph that you just read. Because in the exam, especially for today, because we're dealing with one specific area, but in the exam, you will have multiple things to deal with. So you need to be able to look to go to the question or the statement and identify what are you given in the statement before you even answer the question. So is it one, two, or three, or four? You said number? A two. It's number two. Yes, it deals with the relationship that exists between religious affiliation and whether they favor death penalty. Two categorical variable. Number one, it deals with two numerical variables from the same group population group where you select two samples from those population group. Number three, it deals with correlation test, which is numerical variables. So you are not given numerical variable. You're not given scores or numbers there or means or things like that. The T test for two independent sample, which is the same as number one. I'm not going to go there again. So you just need to make sure that you understand the information given, relationship. If they would have said whether there is a difference between, then you know that either you're going to be doing the means or the T-tests and so forth. 
Sally wonders whether a relationship exists between the person, length, and their leadership ability. Now, here you need to be very careful because remember I spoke about numerical variables and so forth. Do not jump because you saw length and assume that that is a numerical variable. It can be length in a categorical manner described as whether you are tall or short or medium. That is also length. And their leadership ability. She collects data from a sample of 95 people, classifying them as short or tall, and as leaders, followers, and those she could not classify. And she creates a contingency table here. So we can clearly see here, is your person length, which will be tall or short, and the cross classification of uh, leadership ability. So this will be your leadership ability. And it's categorical data because it says classifying them. If the frequency, <coughs> sorry, if frequency data is evenly distributed through the categories with no proportional differences between tall and short people as far as leadership ability goes what would be uh, or what would you expect the number of people who can be classified as short to be so it means you need to go calculate the expected value of short leaders uh, sorry i forgot to read the whole thing short leader so it means short and leader which is 32. Remember the expected frequency. So for short leader, we'll need row total times column total divide by N. So how do I know which one is my row total, my column total? Since they don't have totals, so you just need to quickly go and calculate your total. You can calculate the total for the whole table, but I wouldn't. In the exam, I'll just concentrate on the question that they asked. So since I'm looking at 32, so I'll just calculate the total for that and the total for that. But I need also the, the, the total, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, makes sense. So you just need to calculate the total. So quickly calculate the total and let's complete the whole table. Let's calculate for all the values on the table. So 12 plus 22 plus 9. This will be 13. Carry one. That will be 43. And this will be 10, 12. And this carry one, 52. Therefore, the grand total will be 5, 9, 95. Oh, there are 95. I should have thought about that. So I just need to calculate total for, for leader as well it's four three plus one is it's four i don't have to complete the whole table because i have got the values i need i just need 44 and 52 so coming here yeah. row total 44 multiply by my column total which is 52 divided by 95. Have you calculated? Okay, I can just go use up my calculator. So we have 44 
Let's use the fraction. We have 44 multiplied by 52 divided by 95. And 24.0842, if we round it off to two decimals, the answer is option. Option three. How, how did you get the 44 on uh... um the answer the answer is question is answer is three uh 12 plus 32 since we need to calculate the row total which is 12 plus 32 gives you 44 22 plus 14 will give us 30, 36 and 15 and if I add that will give me 95 happy happiness Okay, same question from the previous. The question now says, to determine whether the relationship exists between the length and leadership ability, Sally has to calculate the appropriate test statistic. Oh gosh. Now, you need to go and calculate the expected values of all of them. Gosh. Let's use our previous values. I am so lazy, so I'm going to just copy. And I'm going to replace. Oh, I cannot replace, I need to. Forty four, thirty six, fifteen, ninety five. What did we get here? Twelve, fifty two, and here we had thirteen, forty three. So we need to calculate. So we did calculate the expected value for this. We found that it was twenty. Oh 24.08. 24.08. So now let's calculate for all of them. So for 12, we say 43 times 44 divided by 95. I also use my calculator this time. If I can find it. Okay, I don't have a calculator other than the one online. So you have to assist with some of the values. I can calculate some, but it will take me forever because I will have to toggle between the two. So let's see, 43 times 44 equals divide by 95. Write it down for 12 is 19.
I have a problem. If I leave the screen, I leave I lose everything. It's nineteen point nine two. I should have done it this way. So let's do for 22. It will be 43 multiplied by 36 divided by 95. And that is 16. 16. That is for 22. So you can write it next to 22 there. It's 16.29. And then I just want to 15. So to multiply by 43 times 15. That is for 9. Will be. Six point seven nine. Now let's do for six since I still have all the values here. I just need to change my forty three to fifty two. Oh, come on, what happened now? Fifty two times fifty divide by 95 so everything will divide by 95 and that is for six it's 8.21 and let's do for 14 for 14 all i just need to do is change 30 36 mm -hmm. Fifty two times thirty six equal nineteen point seven one. Okay, so can quickly write the values that I just calculated now. Nineteen point nine two. And this one is sixteen point twenty-nine and six point seven nine. All the red ones are my expected value. For this one it's nineteen point seven one and eight point two one. So now it says which of the following categories will fall? Uh which one of the following categories will the results fall or will the results fall so on what we need to do because they say if we need to calculate the appropriate test statistic so to calculate the appropriate test statistic remember our chi-square test will be our observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected so it means i'm going to take my observed which are my black ones say 12 minus 19.92 squared divided by 19.92 plus I can just do the 22 22 minus 16.29 squared divided by 16.29 plus and I do nine minus six point seven nine squared divide by six point seven nine plus and do thirty two minus twenty four point zero eight squared divide by twenty four point zero eight plus 14 minus 
seven one squared divided by nineteen point seven one plus six minus eight point two one squared. I'm not sure if you are able to see that eight point two one. Okay, so we just need to work it out. <sighs> the worst part is my calculator cannot work out all of that at the same time. No, there won't be time in the exam to do this because they won't give you questions like this, but I think for your assignments, you are expected to know how to calculate because I think this one comes from your tutorial letter 101. Okay, so let's do the calculations. So, get my other pen and my calculator. So, okay. So, it means I can do three at a time. So I'll do the first three and I will add the second three at the same time. So the first thing I need to do is the, the fraction and do open bracket. What did I do now? Fraction, open bracket, 12 minus 19.921. Divide by 19.92. I can only do three at a time, so I'll just continue. Open bracket 22 minus 16.29 squared. Divide by 16.29. And I just use my arrows plus 9. Uh -uh. Fraction, open bracket, 9 minus 6.79. Bracket squared, go down six point seven nine. Let's take a chance and see if I can add. Ah, I can add another one plus open bracket thirty two minus two four. Point zero eight. I will also show you on the Excel sheet. Mm. Close bracket. Ah, I cannot do that, so I must delete everything because it will not allow me to go beyond beyond that. So I can only do three at the same time. So equal, I can write the answer for the three, which is 5.8. I'm going to write the whole number 5.86970. I don't want to drop any decimals. And then I must do the next, the next three. Oh gosh, it's time consuming to do all the calculations. Thirty two minus twenty four point zero eight close bracket squared go down twenty four point zero eight. Go to the side plus. Open bracket fourteen minus nineteen 
19.71 close bracket squared go down 19.71 that's the last one plus huh, 6 Open bracket six minus eight point two one close bracket squared go down six eight point two one eight point two one equals four point eight number 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 then I must add the other one that I got which was plus five point five point huh. eight six eight six uh -uh. eight five point eight am I typing now five point eight six nine seven zero two Nine oh three equals ten point that's our expected value ten point let me write it down before I forget ten point seven two let's go here and say the answer here is ten point seven two so I just now I'm going to show you my my screen. My my entire screen. Oh, everybody now at Unisa will see my my screen. My screen screen and what I have on my computer secrets and all okay i just wanted to show you i've got a template as well which has different calculations on excel i can email it to you or send it to you on i'll also post it on where the notes are um so our table is a we need to go to our presentation our table is a three by two so i need to use a three by two template so i must you must look at this it says two three by three two by three and there is one at the bottom on the side as well on the side it says what do we have a two by two and a three by two so so since it's a three by two, all I need to do is put in the values. So this is tall and that is short. And I'm not going to put the whole names there. It was leader, follower and unclassified. So I'm just going to use L, L, follower and unclassified. I'm lazy to type the whole sentence. I can just copy them, paste them there. Also the same with the columns because I just need to make sure that I have everything the same way. So on our table, so I'm just going to replace all the black ones on here. That's 12, that's 22, and that's 9. And you will see that calculations are happening right there. 24, uh, -uh not 24, it's 30, 32, 32, 14, and 6. And you've got the same. So if you look at our, our values, 19.2, 16.29, this is our expected. And here it calculated each one of them. So the formula that I use here is just to take 
12 minus 19.92 multiply it again by itself divide by the 19.82 because it's my divide by the expected value i could also have used instead of saying that i could have just used the power because on there it's a power like that it will give you the same answer anywho so our answer is 10.71 is the same as the one where we use the manual calculation and it took us forever three years to get it done so which one of the following statement is incorrect yeah so which one of the following categories will the results fall is it below zero is it between zero and two is it between two and four the result is our 10.72 is above four and that's how you will answer that question i'm not sure how many more exercises we have let's just look at them we have 20 minutes so not so many which within this 20 minutes we will be done so the next exercise the chi-square test statistic is used to compare one, the frequency distribution of the observed with the frequency distribution of the data that is expected if the null is true. Two, the variance. I'm not going to read the whole sentence. Three, the covariance of X and Y. It's one. It is one because remember I said no variance, no covariance. Covariance is four coefficient of uh, coefficient of correlation a researcher wants to establish whether the type of employment category that is filled by employees of a particular company and those are the categories of employment uh, is at all influenced by their gender, male or female, which will be the most appropriate test to use? Is it one, two, or three? Three. It's three. I'm not even going to bother explaining why the other two are not the right ones. A number of psychiatric patients are classified into four categories, and I think this, we looked at something like this. So, and it's we said one. it's one number 15 and i think also this one we did look at something similar but this is different a contingency table indicates one distribution of frequency for a variable two a cost cross classification of two nominal variables three the plot of the relationship between two variables one number two, two or three number two number two because this one says a plot contingency table is not a plot it's a table um, and number three says a distribution of frequencies of variables we're working with two variables a contingency table is used to summarize the relationship between two variables measured on a or n mm, scale one on a nominal scale we can also use the ordinal but it's very rare that you you use a contingency table because with nominal scales usually it's those um rate our what do you call those rate our services which says agree disagree we usually they will not give you like a proper test so we usually like to use the nominal variables for a contingency table. Okay. Which of the following is appropriate formula for chi-square test? Is it number one, number two, number three, number four? Number 
four. It is number four. Even if it's not visible enough, it's number four. This one tests the difference between two samples. This one tests the different uh, test one sample, and this one is four coefficient of correlation. So the only correct answer is number four, which gives you the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. Exercise 18. What is the expected frequency observation in cell A, Y? A and Y. What is the expected frequency of A, Y? Remember? Maybe I shouldn't have written it closer to the table. What you need to do is to calculate row totals. And you need to calculate the column totals. and then have the grand total because they didn't give us what the grand total is here. So you will need to calculate the expected value of AY by using the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So let's calculate row total. For A is 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10. 6 plus 4, every way it's 10. 10, it's 10. 10, 10, 10. So this will be 20. 20. So how do we calculate AY expected frequency? It's 10 times 10 divided by 20. 10 times 10 divided by 20, 20, which is 100 over 10 over 12. It's 5. Which will be equals to 5, which is option number 2. So when they ask you about expected frequencies and they gave you a contingency table, when there are no totals, you quickly calculate the total and you need to know that the formula is this. And I guess they will give you formulas when you go write the exam. Even if you're writing online, they should supply with all sufficient information to enable you to write your exam without any hindrances. Okay, that concludes today's session. Any comments, query, before I wrap up? We have 10 minutes left. Any comments, questions? Please. Uh, for me, it's fine. Excel, for the Excel, uh, and uh, those tables that you say you'll be posting there, because I, I think it's going to help a lot. Okay, so with that, it concludes our session for today. Just to recap on what we did, we looked at the chi-square test for independence. That you need to also make sure that you know how to state your null hypothesis and your alternative. Remember your null hypothesis for chi-square test? There is a relationship between two categorical or two nominal categorical variables. Or they are independent. Your alternative will state that there is a relationship the null, no relationship, alternative, relationship, or it will state that they are dependent. Then you need to know how to make a decision, whether by using a p-value or a t-test. I didn't see any question in your past exam paper where they ask you to make a decision, so 
more or less, and I, by scanning through your past exam paper, as you can see that I've used different exam papers. So <clears throat> you just need to know um, how to build a chi-squared test. Um, what are the characteristics that makes up the chi-squared test, which means you need to know that you use a contingency table and you need to know how to, <clears throat> what formula do you use to calculate the test statistic? <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> my voice is going. Then you also need to know how to calculate the expected frequency because I think in the exam they might ask you to calculate the expected frequency because it's easy to calculate, it's quicker. So you just need to look at the table. If the table does not have totals, create the totals and then use the formula to calculate the expected frequency. You also need to know <clears throat> how to identify the question or the statements given in the question in order to, for you to know which questions or which option you need to choose, especially when you're looking at different types of tests because um, you will get same questions, but for other tests, let's say maybe they're asking you about um, or oh, they gave you two numerical variables. You need to know that those are two numerical variables. Those are not categorical variables. Um, and what else you need to know? That's all that you need to know. And then you should be good. And I think um, in your exam paper, this is only one question, one or two questions. So that concludes today's session. And before we leave, like those who joined late, just to give you an update. So Kim sent me or sent on the group a notice with the pre preliminary uh, exam date, which says the 10th of September or something like that. So it was early September, which is too early because we haven't covered probabilities, which will be next. And I was going to only, I was betting on only doing the basic probabilities and not doing the other probabilities and hoping that in the first week of September, we can do the normal probability and then following after two weeks, we do the discrete. But now it means we need to push and look at other type of skills that you require in order for you to be able to write your exam. So we'll have to have a exam preparation, which will be a workshop and it might not be a two hour workshop. It might be extended to a three hour workshop. And I'm hoping that it can be on a Saturday but I will communicate via WhatsApp in order to arrange for that. Because during the week, I am fully booked um, and there is nothing I can do because um, your module rotates with another module, which is a stats module for the uh, pure statistics second level module. So I cannot uh, also... cancel that one because I also don't know when they write in their exam and they also do it by weekly so it means I need to find a special day for you guys uh, even if it may it might be two consecutive uh, Saturdays I would not mind but I will communicate with you because on Saturdays early in the morning I've got another stats class for all my first level modules. So I'm very, very sorry and for the inconvenience as well, but we will get there. You, you will be ready to go write the exam and give them 100%. Give them the memoranda. Okay, so any questions, any comments, query before we, we part ways? Thank you so much for the help. We're looking forward to getting our distinctions because of your help. You really are good. We appreciate your time. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That really will help. Thank you so much. Yeah.
if there are no questions, then have a lovely evening. See you after two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.